Here's what we're making today. This is a Power BI report with a dark theme with a Figma background. And Figma is not required for this per se, but it does make it look a lot cooler. So I can swap between tabs like this. I don't have any visuals on this page, but you get the idea. So the, um, the highlight is changing as I change tabs. And Figma has a free tier personal account, which is perfectly sufficient to do this. And we're gonna start by setting up the color theme. So let's flip over to Power BI Desktop and I'll show you how to do this. So here's our starting point. These are basically unconfigured core visuals. These aren't any kind of custom visuals or anything like that. I'm going to swap the background to black so that we can kind of see what's going on as we make our theme updates. So that would be this format your report page tab here and then go to canvas background and change the color to black and make sure that your transparency is set to zero because if it's 100% it won't show up. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the visuals in a little bit, but let's get our theme going. So if we go to the view tab in the ribbon up top and then go to this theme selector menu here, if we customize the current theme, we can change our colors. And for the theme colors, what I've done is just taken for the first three colors. I only have three colors in my visuals right now, so I didn't bother with the rest of the colors, but I have a kind of like a medium gray and a light gray and then an accent color. And then we want to go to the advanced tab because there's a whole bunch of elements that are controlled in here. So what I have found is this first level elements, that's going to be for the new card visual, the, um, the big numbers here. So the 64%, this is going to change that color. So we're going to set that to white. I just kind of click and drag up to the corner here to get to the, the white color. Second level elements is going to be all of your axes labels. So we also want that to be white. This third level element I'm just going to leave alone. It seems to be this background color for the new card visual, which we're just going to turn off the background so we don't really need to set a color for it. I'm not sure what fourth level elements is. I'm sure it's used somewhere, so you can set this to white if you want to, but it didn't show up for any of the visuals that I'm using. And this background elements is already white, so we're going to leave that. And I'm not sure where the secondary background elements is used, but I'll just go ahead and set that too. So next we're going to head on over to this text tab here because this is where our primary text color is controlled. So under general, we're going to set the font color from black or whatever it is currently to white. So I like the Seago UI and I literally Google this every time I need to say it out loud because I forget how to say it every single time. But um, that's that's the preferred font for me because it's got a semi bold option for some of your visual titles and that kind of stuff. And then over under title here, we're going to change this to match the Seago UI. I'm going to make it semi bold. Font size 12 is okay. I'm going to do white again for the font color. And then under cards and KPIs, same thing. So this is going to be mostly for the classic card visual. So the modern card visual doesn't seem to use these styles yet. I'm assuming that they'll fix that at some point. But this font size is way gigantic for me. So I'm going to tone it down and set it to white. Tab headers, these I think are these tabs down here. Um, we're going to hide those so we don't necessarily need that. I'm going to leave it as it is. And then for visuals, this one's important. So we need to turn the transparency all the way up. Doesn't matter what color it is because it's going to be transparent. And then make sure your borders are off if you don't want borders. The header I'm going to leave alone. This is basically the context menus in the visuals. So the background for those. You could make this dark too if you wanted to. For the tooltip, we probably want to flip this. So we want the background color to be dark and the labels and text to be white. For page, I'm not going to do anything with the wallpaper. You can try it out if you want to. This is the area behind the canvas. So like these edges here. What I've found is if you make this dark, there's a drop shadow that you can't change the color for. And that drop shadow is white which looks really weird. So I'm going to leave that on white. And for the filter pane, I kind of like it the way it is because um, in Power BI, there's all kinds of navigation outside of the edges of your report, and that's all going to be gray or white. So I feel like this makes the filter pane kind of blend in a little bit, but you could also make this dark if you wanted to. And then click on apply. So that got us most of the way there. So this new card visual, the background didn't turn off. That's okay. We can fix that. So if we select it and then go to format your visual and then just search for the word background in here and turn them off. And then we also want to turn off the border for this. At least I do. So I'm going to search for border and turn it off. And then this dividing line here, if you want to turn that off, it's called divider. 
So we can toggle that off if we want. All right, so we want to probably turn off the grid lines. Grid lines seem to be a thing that's on by default. So if we just search for the word grid for this visual and turn off the grid lines, that makes it look a little nicer. And then I'm gonna manually set the colors for this real quick too. So under lines, I can go to select the series I want. So I'm gonna take the latest fiscal year, which this is an old data set, so it says 2022, but that's the most recent one in this data set. And I'm gonna change it, the color, to be something bright because I want that to be the one that stands out. And then for last year, I'm gonna make that dotted. We could, if we want to, go use the smooth lines for these just by swapping the line type to smooth. Smooth lines are a controversial thing in the data world, so <laughs> choose at your own risk. And this text box here, I have another video on how exactly to set up all the measures to make the dynamic text box. This will follow filters. So if I click on, say, this person, it'll um, auto adjust everything to be for whatever I have selected. I'm going to link it in a card and put it in the video description if you want more information on how to set up the measures for that. We can customize the colors of these so I can select this number and make it our accent color. And same thing with this one and this one. So this one down here, I'm going to use the new bar transparency effect because I think it looks cool with the kind of dark theme with a the background thing. So that would be under columns. You can turn on the border and then set the transparency, something like that. And then I'm going to make the width of the border a little bit thicker. You might also consider turning off the legend titles for things that are obvious. So for example, these months, everybody knows what months are, right? So I don't really need it to say month here. So at this point, you could export your theme file. So um, under the same menu here, save current theme, and then save it to a JSON file. This will let you import it into a different report. You can see how many versions of this I made trying to come up with this video, um, but you get the idea, right? So now on to our Figma background. So I'm gonna pop over to Figma. I've got the desktop client installed, but you don't necessarily need that. You can use the web browser version. They're both pretty much the same. And I'm using the free personal account and it works perfectly fine for this. So the first thing we wanna do is add a frame to put our background content in. A frame in Figma just basically holds stuff and lets you export stuff. So size-wise, to get the size of your frame in Power BI, just check what you're using right now. So if you go to Canvas settings, the height and the width numbers are in here. So just take those and use those to set your height and width of your frame. So over here, this is the frame tool. And if you want a very basic primer on how to use Figma generally with Power BI, I've got another tutorial on that. I'll link it in the card in the video description. Essentially, you're going to just create a frame and then set the size. So it was 1280 by 720. And I'm going to zoom way in so we can see what we're doing. All right, so we have our frame. Now we need some kind of background image that we're going to use for the background of our report. You can create your own with shapes if you want to, or you can use some kind of stock photography. So what I used is just an image from Unsplash. So Unsplash is a stock photography site that has some free images that you can use with attribution. What you can do is search in here for whatever you want. So... And then you can filter on the license type here. So they have a license type filter for free and that'll just give you all of the free ones. And when you're looking for a picture, it doesn't have to be something that's already dark. You can adjust it to make it dark in Figma. So find something that you like the look of and download it to your computer. This is the download button right here when you hover on it. And it gives you this little message about doing a shout out. So shout out to Jay for making this cool image that I'm using in this tutorial. So back over to Figma. I can just drag and drop this picture right from my downloads folder. I'm gonna drop it onto the frame. And it's not gonna be the right size to start, but we can fix that. So I'm gonna zoom way out. So if you hold control on your keyboard and use your mouse wheel, it'll scroll out. And wow, that's gigantic. So I'm gonna hold, I think it's shift. Yeah, if you hold shift when you resize, it'll keep the aspect ratio. So make it about the same size as your background. I'm gonna zoom back in. It's okay if it overlaps underneath the frame, that's fine. 
So now we're going to add our blur effect and a little bit of a darkening effect. So I am going to add a shape. So that's this rectangle shape up here and just draw it over the top of our frame. And I'm going to make mine dark gray or black and then set the transparency on it. I'm going to start with 50% and see how that looks. So this transparency amount is really going to vary depending on how dark your photo already is. So if you have a really dark photo, you could set this to like 0% if you wanted to. For mine, I need to darken it a little bit so that I can see the lines and stuff on the graphs. So I'm going to make it 50%. And then we want to add our blur effect. So blur effect is under effects here. So if I just click this plus icon, it's going to default to drop shadow. Just click on the drop shadow box and change it to background blur. So what that does is it blurs everything behind the shape. And then click on the icon next to the background blur. So that's going to be the settings for it. So it starts off at four, which is just a little bit blurry. You can crank this all the way up to like 100 or that's a little bit too much, maybe like 60. So play around with this number and see what looks good for your particular image. If you want to add some depth to this, you could make your fill a gradient. So there's this option here. If I click on the fill color to swap to a gradient fill. So if we change this to radial, it's going to radiate from the center and I can change the color to kind of match the other one. So if we make the center of the fill a little bit more transparent and then the outside a little bit darker, it's going to kind of create more of a focus effect. Photographers do this all the time where they um, basically kind of darken the outside edges of a photo to try and bring your attention to the center. So that's the background. Now let's move to the menu. So the menu is a really cool technique that I found by... VJ Verma. So VJ Verma is somebody who does Figma tutorials and shares them. So the Figma community is really cool. So they like people who make these things like make their Figma files available to everyone to play with. And that is super cool. So if you open this thing up that he made and then zoom in, it's this sidebar option. So this is super cool. You can zoom in and you can click through and look at exactly how these things are made. Like you can interact with all of these parts and check out the settings to see how he did it. And these are also, if you push this play button in the top right, they're like interactive and stuff. So like you can click on things and they're animated. It's very cool. All right, so anyways, back to how to do this in Power BI. So I'm going to flip back to my Figma and we're gonna add some shapes. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool again. I'm going to zoom in so we can see what we're doing. So the first shape I'm going to add is going to be kind of for the header section. So that's up here. So just click and drag. And it looks like I don't quite have these sized right. So I'm just going to select all three and make sure that they're filling the background entirely. There we go. So what we want here is the layer settings. So if I click on here and then go to overlay, it has a kind of cool effect where it's like kind of semi-transparent. And what I did in this particular case is I set the fill to another gradient. So if I click on the fill and then go to gradients here, I'm going to switch this from a horizontal gradient to a vertical gradient. So like this and actually flip the colors around with this little flip gradient option. So that's kind of a cool effect. I could tone this down a little bit. It's a little bit much like that. So that gives us kind of a designated place for a title of our report. And then for the navigation part, we're going to do kind of the same thing. So in our design, the highlighted page or the current page had kind of like a gradient overlay to it, right? So it was a rectangle, looks something like this. And it was also done with the layer type of overlay. And a gradient. So if I click on this fill again, go to gradient here, and basically just set that second color to transparent, it has a kind of fade out effect. So now for the text, the text we could do on the Power BI side if we wanted to. The only thing is the there's a kind of cool effect you can get with setting text to a layer type of overlay also that I like a lot. So I'm going to do the tab titles in Figma. So to do that, we're going to go to the text menu up here and make a text box. I'm going to do one for the title and one for the subtitle. So I'm going to make the title one, I'll call this like sales overview. 
and that one was just white. You can control the font over here on the right. So there's a drop down with a preview of all the different fonts. And you can click and drag these to move them around too. So now for our subtitle, that's the one that looked kind of cool. Same thing for that. I am going to make this one. Instead of pass through for the layer, it's going to be overlay. Same as our shapes. And I can move that here, maybe make it a tiny bit smaller. So the thing with the overlay settings is that they really depend on whatever is behind it being somewhat of a light color. So they don't show up over a dark color very well. So if I hold down shift, I can select multiple of these and then right click to group them so that I can move them all together. So if I move this over a dark background, it becomes a lot harder to see the text. So try and strategically place things that you are using that overlay setting on if you want people to be able to read it. So that's our active link. If I open up this group, I can just copy and paste these text items to make our second tab. So hold shift, control C to copy. You can also right click it. And then I'm gonna select outside of the group so I don't just double paste it inside the group. Okay, so I'm gonna go to this top level here and then paste it up top and then drag it down here. And we're gonna rename these. So now let's add a couple of shapes to go behind our visuals. These just kind of create some visual separation between the items in your report. So I'm gonna do two rectangles, um, but I'm going to just copy and paste one of them to duplicate it so I don't have to redo all of the steps twice. So I'm gonna make this dark colored and same technique here. So I'm gonna change this to overlay and then make it pretty transparent. So let's try 30. And I feel like the gradient looks kind of nice here too. So if you want to, you can do the same exact thing we've been doing with the flip on the gradient and then turn one of the colors to mostly transparent. And the color of the second one does matter because it's doing a um, kind of a transition. So if you had like white for this color, it would look kind of weird because it starts getting lighter on this other side. So make sure it's kind of a similarly dark color. And then we can just copy and paste this box for our second one. So bear in mind with this, if you have different layouts on different pages, you're gonna want to make those layouts specific to each page because the shapes are baked into the background, right? So here's our page one. We can make page two pretty easily just by duplicating this. So if I click on the frame at the top here, this title text and do a control C, control V, it's gonna duplicate it. So I've got two now. The second one, you can just rename it to page two. And all I need to do here is just take the rectangle that's behind the active tab and move it to be under the other section. So I'm going to actually group these up because I forgot to do that. So let's group these and then drag our rectangle over into our other group. Now it's in the other group, but I haven't moved it yet. So I need to drag it down. The original design for this had an accent bar too for that active tab. So let's actually add that. I almost forgot to do that part. So I'm gonna use a shape for this, a rectangle shape. You could use the border settings too and the shapes options, um, but I like a rectangle because I have a little bit more control over it. So if we just click and drag it to the same height and then set our fill color. So this is gonna be some kind of accent color that goes along with whatever your background photo is. So something like that. And then I'm gonna copy and paste this over to our other one also. And then what you can do is if you right click here, you can paste in a specific spot. So there's a paste here option versus paste, which will paste it wherever it was before. Now you could put your groups in a group if you want to. So these two menu items, if you wanna group those together, you could right click and group them. That way you can move it all together like this. All right, so those are our two backgrounds. We're gonna export these now. So if I zoom out a little bit, if I select this top one here, make sure to select the frame, not an item inside the frame, and then go over on the right-hand side to the export menu at the very bottom and change the size of the export from 1X to at least 2X. Um, so 2X is gonna make it so that you don't have blurry edges when you import it to Power BI and then click on this export button here and that'll just put it in your downloads folder. Same thing for our second one. So select it and export, change it to 2X and export. 
If you've got simpler shapes and less photos and stuff going on, you could export this as an SVG. So there's a drop down menu here that lets you change the type. SVG is something that scales better. It's usually used for shapes and things like that that have hard edges. All right, let's pull this into Power BI. So back on our report that we set up our theme in, if I go to the Format Your Report page tab and then go to Canvas Background, there's an option to import an image. So I'm going to click on Browse and then select the first background image that we exported, so this one here. And by default, it does kind of weird things. So it, you don't want it to be image fit normal. You want this to be image fit fit, so that'll scale it. And then we're gonna need to rearrange our visuals a little bit to fit in the boxes that we made. So we're just gonna quickly So in regards to logos, you're going to want to use a white logo probably. Um, most organizations have a white transparent version of their logo. And I'm going to put it inside the PBIX file instead of inside of Figma because what happens is organizations do rebranding all the time. And if there's a rebrand and you have to go through and update the background of every single one of your reports, that's going to be super annoying. So we're just going to use image and then import it like this. So you'll notice that our links over here don't do anything when we click them. That's because we haven't added the functionality for that yet. So let's go ahead and do that now. So to get our page navigation into buttons, what we're gonna do is go to the insert tab and then go to buttons, navigator at the bottom here and select page navigator. All right, so for our page navigator, we're gonna change the grid layout from horizontal to vertical so that they're stacked like this. And then we're gonna kind of overlay them over the top of our menu links. So something like that. And I'm gonna decrease the padding a little bit. And then we just turn off all of the stuff. So we're gonna turn off the text. You could leave the text on if you didn't do your text in Figma. But I'm gonna turn mine off and then I'm gonna turn off the background. Background is already off, so transparency. I'm gonna turn the fill off. Make sure the border is off too. Border, border off. And I'm going to click on this and then copy it. By the way, if you want to control which pages show up in here, that's under this pages section. So we want to show hidden pages. So leave this on. I'll show you why in a second. And then if you want to select exactly which pages are in here, you can do that too. So go to page two and paste your bookmark navigator in here too. And then we're just gonna import the background the same way. So click on the canvas, canvas background image, and then select your second export. So that's this one here. And turn the transparency off, image fit. And then what you wanna do is hide all of the pages except for your first page in your report. And the reason you wanna do this is because if you don't, you're gonna get a second navigator menu when you publish that's along the side. So you'll have two sets of navigation links and you don't want that. So we're just going to hide this. When you hide it, if you only have one page showing, Power BI will automatically hide that side navigation menu. All right, let's make sure this works. So you have to hold control to click it when you're in the desktop. So click on this one that moves us here. Click on this one. It moves us back. And you probably want to rename this tab so that it matches whatever you've called it in your background. All right, so we are done with our dark mode theme. So thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.